So I've been playing drums a long time. Now, as any musician that's been playing for a long time, when you look back at older stuff that you recorded, a lot of times it's pretty cringeworthy. But the past can also be a great teacher. Now, a lot changes in your life and in your playing over the course of a decade. So I thought it'd be cool to look back at one of my old videos that's nine years old with that perspective. That's what's coming up next. Let's get to it. Now I know you're here on YouTube and you're scrolling through all kinds of drum content, but again, if you wanna get a little bit deeper into some of my teaching and the stuff that we do, I have a whole community over at thedrummersalmanac.com. You could get started by joining TDA University, which is my mailing list, and you do that by taking the Drum Foundation Challenge, which is an awesome test of your fundamentals. So if you haven't done that, it's free. Head down to thedrummersalmanac.com and take that challenge. It's a bear, but it's worth it. So a little perspective on this video. 10 years ago, I was a drummer in New York and I was in a Chick Corea tribute band. And we were doing our own arrangement of the tune, Got a Match, which is on Chick Corea's first electric band record. And we were just learning the tune at that point and we hadn't put it into our set, so Great way to learn a song is just to record yourself playing it. So after transcribing it and going through it and learning our arrangement, I just got in front of the camera, I hit record on the microphones, and I just started playing along to the scratch piano track that my keyboard player had thrown down for me. Now the goal was to have all the guys eventually come in and play along and do a video, uh, but that never materialized. So basically, I'm the only one that laid down the part. So the take that we're gonna look at is me going through this chart. This is probably about the third time I've ever played through it. Uh, and that's the one I end up keeping. So I'm very new at playing this. Now when I moved down here to Georgia a few years ago, of course we stopped playing with the band, so I just basically haven't even looked at it in years. But because of COVID-19 and the isolation, I was talking to a couple of those guys from New York and we thought it'd be a fun idea to redux or get back into a version of this song. So we are gonna do a remote collaboration and redo this song nine years later. So step one for me before I record my track is to actually look at what I did in the past, see what I wanna keep and what I might wanna change. So if you wanna check the original video that I'm reviewing here, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description for you. Okay, so I gave myself my four clicks. That was to help me sync up the audio and the video. This is before the days that Final Cut did that for you. I actually got a really good drum sound. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that when I play the groove, I'm crossing my right hand to the snare drum. I didn't do it there. But more when I was doing it off to the hi-hat. And I know I don't really play it like that anymore. Yeah, like that. Bebop time feels good. And right off the bat, I'm noticing that I have a lot more hair. Yeah, a little bigger. Okay, the other thing that I'm noticing is that this track is really long. It's something like over nine minutes. So I'm gonna wanna scale that back and maybe reorganize this so it's not so long for YouTube. Spare you guys sitting here for 10 minutes. Now our live version of this was like 10 minutes long. Sometimes 15, sometimes 20, depending on solos. But I wanna get that under, if we can, under seven minutes. Like this whole section here. So I'm doing like a clave and filling it in. Now it's a little different than what Dave Weckl did on the original track, but it works for the solos. So this would kind of be like the bass solo. Okay, now we're gonna do this weird music interlude here, which is gonna 
change the time to triplets. Okay, so it looks like we got this weird keyboard pad and I'm doing this jazz thing. Almost like this Paul Wurtigo type of uh, thingy vibe. But again, a lot, lot of transition, a lot of filler here that I think I'm one of, we're probably gonna get rid of. Um, as far as how I'm playing it, being that this is like one of the first times I'm playing the tune, I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Uh, I'm pretty relaxed. I guess uh, that's what happens when you're, you're really practicing all the time. This is before I had kids or I had a family, so I was playing a lot of drums. Okay, so now right there, we did that metric modulation where I turn the triplets into 16 notes and that's going to change our tempo. So the tempo goes from 151 I think to around 112 when you do that. And this is the guitar solo is the way we played it so I'm probably going to change that up because again the whole arrangement is incredibly long. The other thing is I'm playing this like a, like a rock. I want to do something a little bit more funky when we redo this. You know what's really scary is I think I have the same sneakers. Still. Might be time to throw them out. I was definitely a lot skinnier. <laughs> less wrinkles, less beard, and more hair. I do like that. So I'm doing that risable thing where you go up on the, the offbeat. That's something I'm going to have to keep for the newest version. But this just goes on forever. Again, this is all guitar solo. He's soloing, soloing, soloing. So, out of context, it kind of sounds like he's playing forever. And we got these organ pads, so these keyboard pads. Now we're going to do these transition licks. We get that da 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 which is 16 notes, but I'm going to use that pattern to modulate the time back to triplets. Right here. 16s. Now I'm going to switch to triplets. And that's going to keep us in this tempo now. Definitely struggling with the tempo. <laughs> okay, here's the solo where you're playing in unison with the band. Okay. Staying inside the eighth note phrasing, because it's just really fast. Yeah, I wasn't, wasn't quite ready for those. And I'm a little bit behind. <laughs> I don't know if you could, you could hear it, I could feel it. Because I'm, I'm struggling to keep up with the phrases. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that was, that, I love that part. So that, that part's gonna make it a new version. Definitely having struggling a little bit to play through those phrases. Just because at that time I was so new to it that it was like, you know, I didn't have it under my hands. Not to say that I'll have it under my hands now because I haven't played this in years. So it's going to take a little while to get this back to where it was. But I do have the benefit of playing with the band live and actually having to perform this in front of an audience. And that's going to take you to a different level. Okay, so this is the keyboard solo. We're going back and forth from like a rock and an you know, Afro-Cuban type of thing. And again, it's kind of going on forever, so I think I'm going to cut the choruses down. It's also very repetitive, so I think we, we got to do something here to change the vibe up a little bit. I'm definitely going to work on this section. Get back to the head. There we go again, where I'm kind of moving the, the ride symbol back down to the snare with the right hand. 
not the really not the way I, 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 I kept doing it. Once I got more comfortable with the groove, I started separating that a little bit. So basically, I'm playing time over the solely hits now, and that's how we arranged it. All right, then that's the tune. Okay, so a couple of things that that I would definitely change. Um, I wasn't as comfortable with the phrases when I was doing that. And I attribute that to just not playing it enough, you know? So at that point, my technique was really good because I was doing a lot of technique exercises at that time, uh, working with a lot of students. So my hands were kind of up to it, but because I wasn't as familiar with the phrases, I was struggling in some of those solely sections um, where it was not locking in completely with the band. So when I go to redo this, I gotta have to really you know, work on making those lock-in seem more comfortable. Uh, also, just soloing in general, I feel like I was rushing or trying to rush to stay on top of the time. So it doesn't feel like to me as a player, and it might not sound like that to you, but it doesn't feel like, like I was super comfortable with that soloing. So that's something I'm gonna have to pay attention to when I go to redo this. The other biggest takeaway that I'm gonna do is we're, we're gonna have to really cut this track down and shave off a couple of minutes because it's way, way too long. So <laughs> that's that's pretty much how it's gonna go. But all in all, you know what? I'm not as embarrassed as I thought I was. I'm more embarrassed for the fact that I got really old in the past 10 years. So, but you know what? Having kids and getting married and doing all that, that'll, that'll age you a little bit. So there you go. What I'm gonna try to do is lay down a little bit of a, of a take and maybe if I can get something down, I'll include in this video a side-by-side -side of what I did there versus what I do now. And maybe we could kind of compare the differences a little bit. Thanks for checking out the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. And above all else, when you're learning the drums, remember to always, always practice with purpose.